Hey guys, today I thought I'd do a quick video on logs. So if you've been in IT forever like I have, then you have probably suffered in logs, right? Your server's down or your services are down and you're trying to figure out what's going on. So you're trying to look through the log to find that one error message. It's like a needle in a haystack. Try to find that one error message which has a tiny bit of a clue on what might be going on on your server. So wouldn't it be nice to have a central location that pulls in all your logs from all your servers and then you use a nice web-based GUI to go ahead and search for the information you need. You put in some keyword, maybe a couple IP addresses, bam, there's your information, right? Instead of going line by line. I mean, you might have some like super great grep abilities or maybe you have like mad set and aux skills, but you know what, at the end of the day, wouldn't it be nice to have a tool to help you out doing this? You don't have to remember the exact syntax of that regular expression that you need to do on that command line to pull up, maybe just filter out everything you don't need. So today I thought I'd check out the latest version of Nagi's log server. This is actually brand new with tons of new features. It came out just a couple days ago. So I'm gonna go over how quickly it is to install. You spin up a new VM in the cloud or in your personal data center and go ahead and install it within 10 minutes. You download an installer and run it. That's it. Take a look guys. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and install the server. So we're going to download the code, the installer. I usually like making it in my own directory and slash op apps. That's usually what I commonly do when I want to install software. And I just download the installer and you can pick files in there. And then I go ahead and start the installation. So we're just going to issue this wget to this um, URL. And I'll go ahead and provide this in the notes. So it's going to download the latest version of Nagios Log Server. And the latest one just came out just a few days ago. So this is really, really new. It has some new features. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try and check it out. It's a great way of centralizing all your logs. So you don't wanna go right server by server looking at logs and looking line by line. It's really painful. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this product. So I'm gonna go ahead, once it's done downloading, I'm gonna uncompress it and tar it. And in there, it actually has this a file called full installer. Now the full installer is really easy. Um, it will work pretty much seamlessly and I'm running CentOS 7, uh, the latest distribution, um, and run seamlessly on Red Hat as well and never had problems. So it does the full installation, installs any package it needs, it, needs to, it compiles anything it needs. So really just in a few minutes, it's able to install the full server for you. And then it just provides you with a URL to go to to access the web interface. So Pat does all the um, installation of the services. And this is actually using um, Elk Stack, which is actually a set of three different products. So it's Elasticsearch, um, Logstash, and which are used for searching and indexing. And there's a third tool which is used for visualizing the data. So this is kind of commonly used with actually like big data. And when you think about logs, I mean, if you've done ad T for a long time, you know these logs can get easily in the gigs, right? On a single server. And then if you have a whole data center full of servers and you need to look at all the logs, you know how fast the logs get very, very large. So the concept of using big data on your logs isn't that far-fetched, okay? So, okay, so our installation's done. Now see that nice little website it points us to, and that's gonna take us there to finish our installation. So it installs the web services, it opens up the firewall, installs all the packages we need. We start up the services, and now we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and click on that URL, and let's open up the web interface. So here's our website. So it's really simple. I mean, it just asks you if you have a license key. Otherwise, you use it completely free for 60 days to give it a try. Setting up your administrative user passwords. So Nagios Admin is the default admin account on this. And email and time zone and language. So really, really simple. You go ahead and enter that information and your installation's done. Your server is kind of ready to start collecting logs. Now, I set up a single instance of Nagios log server. You could have a cluster of log servers. So if you have large data centers in different locations, maybe you want a log server near um, those servers or near that data center, only because once data logs get pretty large, you don't maybe not want to transfer it over your network or um, over the internet. Maybe it has sensitive data that maybe you're worried about. So you probably just want to uh, set up uh, Nagios log server instances near your servers. Might be a good re uh, recommendation to do that. It will help with performance. 
And not just log server also has redundancy built in. So if you do your initial backup of your logs or initial download or syncing of your logs, then it will replicate across to another instance in the cluster of Nagios log servers. So this is a really helps for performance, especially with large data centers in multiple locations. All right, so now we're ready to log into our Nagios log server. We're going to use our default uh, Nagios admin account. Now Nagios has the option for central authentication. You can hook it into your LDAP or your Active Directory and use your domain admin accounts on here if you configure it that way. So that's a great option. They don't all have to be local accounts. And then if you work for a company, all your other Nagios log instances could all be hooked into the same central authentication system. When you log in for the first time, you notice it's going to have one unique host. That's really one source of information is what you're saying. So it's collecting logs from a single source, which is the, by default initially, it is the local server, the local server that Nagios Log Server is installed on. Now the second item to look at is one instance. So you could have that cluster of log servers, right, in all the regions that your company might be in to help um, you know, collecting data, and then you can have redundancy as well in your logging information. So for every instance of Nagio log server node or member of the cluster, there'll be one additional instance. So right now we just have the one. Now the little dashboard right here previous shows you the last 15 minutes and the quantity, quantity of logs in the last 15 minutes. Some of the other things to look at on here, it has reach out. So I'm using a temporary demo license, but if you want more information, we'll do a demo for you. Um, you can provide some feedback if you have any sort of issues. And then if you need any help, you have some support. So then right at the under that, you look at the global dashboard and my dashboards. So we have an option here to set up um, global dashboards for every user that has access to Nagios log servers. So if you have a team, or you're in an IT department, you want to allow all your IT personnel to be able to look at the log server to analyze data. You go ahead and set up global dashboards, which is available to anyone that logs in. Or you could have my dashboard, which is just what you're using. And the dashboards have information about, um, you customize it, but it has information about your logs. And then you can customize it for specific searches. You want to search for a certain IP with a certain error message, maybe a certain time of day. So you go ahead and take really customize those dashboards and it just shows you information continuously for that. You can run queries um, for information right now or within a time frame. And then you can give it filters. By default, it's going to be show all items. So here's an example of our dashboard right here. You notice that asterisk right up there where it says query. Asterisk means just everything. You show me everything. And then as we scroll down, you can kind of see all the data in our logs that we're collecting so far. Next, if we look at alerts, you can see that we can set up ways of notifying us if a certain error message appears. So if we know one of our services fail or is having problems and it fails with a certain error message, maybe you want to be notified an email or sent a page. If you hook it into Nagios XI, you could actually hook in your log server to there and page you if a certain error message, or you can run a script, like if something says failed, service is shutting down to that effect, then you can go ahead and run a script to reattempt to restart the service. So a lot of things you can do with your alerts. Really quickly, some of the other features to look at is the configuration, which you can modify some of the settings, and then the Nagios help, which you can contact information about how to get to a whole administration, and there's some video logs, and then you can look at admin, which has all the configuration, and then user management, Active Directory, LDAP configuration to manage the server, the Nagios log server instance that you're running. Now that we're a tiny bit familiar with the interface, the first thing you want to do is start ringing logs. So the more logs I have, the better idea of what I should be queuing and having on my dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and use the wizard here and look at all the options. You can see right off, it has a lot of the common stuff you see in a data center. You've got your Windows server, your Linux server, your web services, your SQL servers, 
MySQL. So I'm going to go ahead and add it in Linux server. So right here under automatic configuration, I can provide me with a little script I run remotely on the server I want to start downloading the logs from. So if I use this curl command, it's going to go ahead and to bring down a script, download a script for me to set up the client side. So I'm going to do an RPM and I need to know if rsyslog is installed. It needs rsyslog for this to work and it also needs how to, dis uh, to disable SE Linux as well. Sometimes that will actually prevent your uh, system from forwarding logs. So right away I could see that our syslog is there. If it's not, we could easily done a yum command to install it. And then I'm going to go ahead and use curl and I want to download that script. Now it's just a really tiny script, just really fast. It just opens up some information and set up our syslog to start forwarding the logs to a remote IP address. So, and I'll put this uh, in the notes as well, this URL, this address to download setup-linux.sh. And if you notice that IP address is the non-use login structure running, so it has it, it all on the system um, for our data center that we set up our non-use log server in to we'll start downloading. So we're gonna go ahead and run our script. It looks like it runs successfully. And then we're gonna disable SE Linux. So set enforce zero and the and Forest shows that it is disabled. To test if our configuration is working correctly, we go back to that initial page on Denali server where it has an IP address and go ahead and type in an IP address there to test if it has it starts downloading successfully. Now after that, once you go back to your home page, your main page, you can see that there are now two unique instances. That's for each of the source, so the local Nogus log server and our remote Linux clients that we just um, set up. So if we start looking at the logs, you start seeing some logs, not just from your local host, but again, from the second log server. So I went ahead and added a third um, host or source of logging information, which and I added an Apache web server as well. So we have some uh, Apache access and error logs, and maybe I'll do a video later on how I did that configuration. Again, it's very similar to the Linux server. So now if you go over dashboard, on the top there it says query, I can start searching for host by IP address. So I can put in my host name or my IP address and I can search that information and it pulls up just the logs for that specific host. Now you could also deep in further by looking at the logs. When you click on a message, it will break down the message for you in a much easier, easier way than looking at the logs. So it gives you this nice table and you can download the JSON file for it and it has a key like a key value pair. And you could actually search by those key values. So if you expand it, you could actually click on one of those icons and search, add an additional filter to your search for those items, which is really helpful. So if you find like, for example, one error message, you wanna know how often this critical message is happening on your system, you can go ahead and use that filter option. So right here we have an IP address, we have a timestamp, and we have a filter. So syslog, and we want to show everywhere that it maybe it has a warning or message. Now we could click and add of that filter option, and then it just pulls in for information we need. We could also go in here and modify it. So here's once we add additional filters to our query, we can go ahead and here and click in here and modify the values. So let's say you're searching for maybe a warning message, but now you only want to see what the critical messages. You can go ahead and click on here and actually modify it, the string being searched. You can also delete the filter item. So let's say it's too customized, you're not getting any usable results back. You can go ahead and delete the entry to be searched in your query. And hopefully by then, it gives you some useful information for troubleshooting on your system. Now, if it's a query that you know you're going to do really often, you go ahead and save it. So our dashboard, or my default dashboard is going to save. Let's say this is what you want to see every time you log in. You can also do a manage query. So let's say you want to do this specific query where it searches for 
a certain uh, warning or critical keyword, an IP address, you go ahead and click save the query. You can name the query hopefully something you know meaningful so you know what it, exactly what it does. And you go ahead and save it. You can make it global. That's for all users that can log into Nagios Log Server or just for yourself, and that'll be located under my dashboards or my queries. So we get, once we have it saved, we go ahead and clear out these queries and start looking at all our data and maybe do different queries to find out maybe what might be going around in some systems if that's what we're looking for. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Definitely check out your logs, man. Logs have the information for everything. Anytime there's a problem, straight to logs, right? Everything's in the logs. You should know what's going on in your logs. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Keep an eye on your logs, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.